Now to continue our inspirational story series, we are joined in the Harvey Normal Lounge by an Amazon number one best-selling author who has built a multiple six-figure business from her laptop over the last six and a half years while living out of her suitcase and traveling to over 70 countries. Welcome, Natalie Sisson. Hi. Welcome. That sounds like everybody's dream. Uh, first up, let's go back to the beginning of the journey. So you were in the corporate world for eight years and you ended up in London with a pretty impressive business role. What was it that really triggered you to start doing what you're doing? I think it was the bureaucracy, the commute every single day, like London's an amazing city but when you're in a nine to five um, it was just incredibly frustrating and mm. for the first time in my life I woke up and didn't actually want to go to work which is mm. very unlike me. It's not a good feeling <laughs> yeah. no. Okay and then what did you do? Um, I actually had just got a raise and a bonus and I decided to hand in my notice on just on a year wow. and flew to Canada to play World Championship Ultimate Frisbee. Didn't really have a plan, but just booked a one-way ticket, packed up my life into a suitcase and took it from there. So you knew that there was something that you had to do. So so you're in Canada. Um, what happened then after the Ultimate Frisbee competition? Which is cool, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> do, you still, cool. do, you still, do you say play Frisbee? Do you still, yeah, do you yeah, still, still do play it? Frisbee. It is a sport. It's a real sport. It is a Not sport. Not just for dogs on a beach. So you're still doing the worlds and things? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, just in London last year. So let's go back to Canada. So mm -hmm. you're there. So what did you do afterwards? I did a lot of networking. I was in Vancouver, so I did a lot of networking at business events and just basically hustled to meet new people and met my business partner and we co-founded a tech company actually within the first probably month or two of me being there. Did you know what you wanted to do or did you just... I just knew I didn't want to be a nine to five and I did have an inkling that I wanted to do something in health and fitness and um, bringing health into the corporate environment just because I'd seen so many unhealthy people in my jobs mm. um, but then ended up not doing that at all. So what gave you the strength to take that leap of faith? Because a lot of people probably sit there and think, oh, cool, it'd be great to sit in the cafe in Bali and run my business. Oh, me. <laughs> yeah. But well, we get nervous because we think of, you know, the commitments we've got. So what was it that gave you the strength? I think it was just what's the worst that could happen. Like right. if I took a huge leap and I failed, I'd just have to go back into a job. But I had so much motivation to not do that, that was the thing that just made me push forward. And then it's just making that decision. And so what with the travelling, so you obviously weren't based in one place, you were travelling mm. all over? Yeah. I started off, um, went to Argentina for about five months and lived and worked there and then I went to Amsterdam and then Berlin and then I was just bouncing around all over the world. It was pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah. How do we all achieve freedom in business? Because this is what the Suitcase Entrepreneur book is yeah. all about. So yeah. how do we do that? It's a great question. Uh, I actually think you just have to be really, really clear on what you want out of life. And I don't think many people actually sit back and say, if I could have the perfect day, day after day, what would I be doing? Where would I be? And how would I be living my life? Mm. And what career would I have? Okay, so if you are saying those things, uh, there are some smaller things that you can do in your everyday life to sort of get you to that big picture? Yeah, I often talk to people about little mini moments of your perfect day. So why don't you take a little digital sabbatical during the day, disconnect completely from social media, and simply read a book like you would on holiday. I mean, it sounds really simple, but it's like taking a little break. Um, and just being really clear again on what you'd love to do. So can you um, take a nap in the afternoon? Can you just take a time out in the morning to do a little bit of yoga or meditation and just give yourself those moments of freedom in your day rather than always being on, rather than always working? Because mm. I guess that's yeah. what people yeah. assume is success, always being on, always working. But you think it's really important to take that time out? I disagree with that entirely. I can't right. stand it when people are like a badge of honour because I've worked a 60 hour week. Mm. Um, I actually think they've got something wrong. They don't have great systems. They don't have um, you know, a really good work life harmony as I like to call it. Yeah. Um, and they don't have the priorities usually in check. So if somebody has a great idea and they want to start doing what you're doing because mm -hmm. it sounds like a dream, mm. yeah. what is the first thing that they actually need to do? I think I often tell people to figure out their sweet spot, which is the intersection between what you're good at or you're really good at, what you enjoy doing or you love doing, and what people will pay you for, and that's usually the, the harder part there at the end. But mm. often we have skills and talents and experience that can actually be monetized and turn into a business or at least a freelance career. Mm. And, and have you had any scary moments? Yeah, I had my um, suitcase stolen almost when I was in Vietnam. Um, they just sort of took off with a motorbike and grabbed it, but luckily my laptop bag was on the handle. <laughs> well, yes. um, scary moments in terms of business have just been those moments of am I going to make it, I don't have enough money coming in, I can't pay the rent, um, just all those wonderful moments, a launch didn't go well or didn't mm. go as well as you thought. Right, so and it's real. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really real. And yeah. The fear of just pushing through and just coming back to how do I want to live my life. And so what are you hoping that people are going to get out of the book? I really hope it's for, for two different sort of audiences, people who want to quit their job and, and start their first business and also for experienced entrepreneurs who want to have more freedom in their life and working too hard. So I just really want people to see what's possible when you put your mind to it. 
Yeah. yeah, and also getting inside your mind, because I think if you've been given a raise <laughs> and a promotion at work and then you decide to chuck it all in, yeah. that's, that's... Most people thought that was crazy. Yeah, no, that it is, <laughs> but you can learn more about it in this book. You are inspiring. Yes, and for more from Natalie and to buy her book, you can go to suitcaseentrepreneur.com forward slash book.